We're here in Phoenix at the 2015 IEB Annual Leadership Meeting where we've just wrapped up our town halls. Four intimate forums which call on attendees to collaborate on how we overcome pressing issues. Town halls set the agenda for our industry and they require active participation. Let's hear what they had to say on programmatic. Okay, so what is the future of programmatic? Well, first, we didn't spend that much time talking about what does end state look like, and in fact, what we were trying to do is talk more about how do we raise all boats today? What can we do today to actually make programmatic better? So what did we learn? <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask you. <laughs> One of the things that we, we, it took us about 15 minutes to realize that we weren't speaking the same language. We all wanted a, a, a common language. What does programmatic mean? I think we finally came to the conclusion that we shouldn't use the word. Yeah, I think a lot of people at the end said, Programmatic is a word that is just too ambiguous, and we should agree on what all the terms are. So we have to get better about the terms that we use, and one of them should not be programmatic, or at least we can reduce the use of the word programmatic because too many people mean too many different things when they talk about it. And this wasn't as uh, uh, sort of, this wasn't a problem when we're talking about RTB. It was a problem when we got into discussions about private marketplaces. Okay, what else did we learn? Uh, so I would say one of the other things that we learned is there's definitely some, a divide between uh, uh, whether linear television is gonna move quickly or slowly. I would say there were some people in the room that were pretty adamant that it was gonna take a long time, but there were a lot of people. Actually, I was surprised at how many people felt like linear television was gonna move relatively qu quickly, and that many of the deals that have been announced so far in linear television are, are substantial, and people felt like there was something real there. So I think people are looking at 2015 as a year where more and more uh, linear television is going to make migration, but that's again where terms became a problem because sure. I think immediately people started saying, well, it's not really linear anymore, and what's really programmatic? And uh, I think we all agreed that uh, more and more television is going to be addressable, and the, the movement in 2015 is going to be substantial. Right. A year ago, it was if it's going to happen. This right. year, it was definitely, has it already happened, or when will it, you know, when is this mega shift going to take place? That's right. And I think a lot of people were we're articulating well that 2015 is definitely a game changer, at least as it relates to where we've been before, but it's still going to take a while for us to make massive transactions or, or transitions, I should say. Um, anyway, what else? We talked is, it, about, is, uh, is it fair to say that uh, part of the conversation was, hey, sure, television is going to happen, but let's fix the other parts of the uh, ecosystem as well? Yeah, I, felt, I, I do feel like a lot of people, and I thought this was a really astute point, a lot of people felt that uh, television would move over, but we had to fix things in guarantees or programmatic guaranteed before we would get a lion's share of, that, of those dollars. Sure. And there's a lot of work that we have to do in programmatic guaranteed, programmatic premium, programmatic direct, or forward market, which is sort of a bundle word for all of that. There's a lot of work that we have to do in the PMP world in order to get there. But, I've just underscored the terminology problem. Sure, but fair to say that <laughs> For the most part, people were on the same page. It wasn't a lot of, hey, buy side versus sell side versus where does the platform people fit in. It was all, hey, we're in this together, we're getting there, but a lot of work to be done. Yeah, and I think it was just sort of summarizes. There were a lot of complaints about, hey, I do a whole bunch of work to do PMPs where I don't make any money. And whether you're one of the television people in the room saying, hey, I'm going to focus on the Super Bowl for next year because that's going to make me more money than any, P any thousand PMPs that I can put together between now and then. Uh, so whether you were on that side or whether you're a platform who's just complaining about the fact that you did all this work to put together a PMP only to spend $146 True. on that. True. There were lots of complaints. True. Which led us th to the group in entirety was, hey, I think we fix this through education. Yep. That was definitely a takeaway that, you know, the more we learn and the more that we understand the frustrations and the limitations on each side, the better we're off. So focus on an educational role. Exactly. I, I also thought, thought it was helpful the point that was made actually at the very beginning, which was a programmatic is something of a train that cannot be stopped. And you either get on the train or you get run it over It will by not the be train. stopped. It will not be stopped. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and because it can't be stopped, like we have to think about how to live in a programmatic world rather than do we want to live in a programmatic world. And uh, Steve, you brought up an interesting point about decisioning. I don't know if... I said as the buy side, the most important thing that people need to consider for when my clients want to spend money is the, uh, the point of uh, ad call that I want to make the decision tree. 
Right. Like, you know, like you a lot of decision trade. Correct. A lot of people are saying, hey, listen, this is programmatic, guaranteed direct, and all these types of things. But my focal, focal point was, hey, all these words and these different categories are fine. But if, if I'm not making the decision at the time of an ad call, then it's not necessarily that interesting to me. Uh, yeah, I thought it was an excellent point. And Matt, Matt Spiegel did a great job of adding punctuation at the very end of all this, which is we probably spent a lot of time talking about uh, sort of the advanced calculus of programmatic where if we had advertisers and publishers in the room, they would just be confused as hell yeah. about what we were actually talking about. And that, uh, again, we overuse all of these terms that confuse them instead of just focusing on the things that are actually going to, to work for them, meaning let's focus on performance. And if you talk about how can I get you better performance or better targeting or all these things, they're going to naturally want programmatic. But when we go in with a programmatic pitch, it can sometimes be polarizing. So if we can just reduce the language, focus more on actually how we benefit the ends, the advertisers and the publishers, then we'll get incentives aligned better, which was probably the last point to just highlight is the, we talked a little bit about org structure and how that doesn't necessarily reflect the, the right incentives. I don't know, you, you mentioned this as we were walking over here. Uh, yeah, I think we, we got into the weeds a little bit on what should a sales organization look like on the publisher side and the agency side, and I think kind of time just will fix that. And, you know, like, I don't think there was a conclusion that was made, but, um, you know, like, we, we decided that, hey, this is not going to alleviate a, a, every sales job, and, you know, the, the, the future was looking pretty bright for everybody in that room. Yeah, no sales jobs are going away, and also just that, I think org structure should reflect uh, 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 um, proper incentives. And right now, in both the buy side and the sell side, we don't necessarily have the incentives to always do the right thing. We have the incentives to do the thing that has been done for a long time. Correct, correct. Right. So, so then there was a, I, I think the standing ovation is still happening. I yeah, kind of hear I, a, I, We had to slip out the back just yeah. because of all the applause. It's like the Beatles. I know, yeah. <laughs> seriously. So, so, I mean, I think it went well. Hey, nice work, dude. Hey.